Hello friends, back in April of 2016 I bought an old lathe and as some of you might remember I've shown you the parts of that lathe back then in an update video. I also followed up with two episodes covering at least parts of the restoration process of that old piece of machinery. And while I still recommend you to watch those older episodes, you can find them as always in the video description, you can also just skip those and watch this episode alone as I'll give you a brief synopsis of everything that happened before. So let's just get right into it then. So here we are back in my old garage in 2016 and this is the state that these parts were in when I had just bought them. We had several layers of old damaged paint painted on top of each other, a lot of rust and a lot of grease. And it was impossible for me to see possible damages to the parts be it just for being covered with all that dirt, grease and rust. And I'm also a person who just takes joy in looking at beautiful things. So I considered the possibility that this lathe might be damaged in some way and might not be suited for actual operation in the workshop, but that it could still be kind of a piece of history or art if properly restored, at least optically. So I wanted to remove all that dirt and rust and old paint before trying to get the lathe running. And this is what I did. I started with the cast iron parts comprising the frame and machine bed of the lathe. And I first used an angle grinder and a large wire wheel to remove some of the old paint. I also used a power drill with smaller wire wheels to, you know, access indentations and other parts that I could not reach with a large one. I also then used a needle scaler, which a lot of people, I guess, know from rust removal, but it was actually very well suited for paint removal as well. And I also did a lot of sandblasting. The rust on the beds was actually rather superficial and most of what we saw there was just old grease. So I did not use any methods of rust removal, either mechanical or chemical on the beds, but instead just degreased them with brake cleaner and gasoline. I dried them and then applied new oil immediately. And after that, the parts of the frame were put back together and got a new paint job. And the paint that I used here is a two component polyurethane paint that is normally used in naval applications or for painting boats, etc. And the color is RAL 7021. And the next thing that I worked on was the tailstock. And here again, I started by removing the paint from the central cast iron piece by sandblasting its surface. But one thing that was really important here was to block the blasting media from entering any of the holes or threads around this central workpiece. And I did that by inserting paper towels and then covering the holes with duct tape. I don't necessarily recommend to use these rather improvised means, but to be honest, it worked well enough. Whatever little sand or media might have remained on some of the edges of these threads was then blown out with a blowgun. However, I didn't use sandblasting on the moving parts of the tailstock. For that, I used chemical means. And by that, I mean citric acid and a gelatinous rust remover that is also based on citric acid. And if you want to know more about that, I made a special episode about citric acid rust removal. You can find it in the video description. And here you can see a before and after comparison for the frame and machine bed and then also for the tailstock. So some of the most important lessons here were whether you use brake cleaner or gasoline to remove grease or a needle scaler or sandblasting or even citric acid to remove paint and or rust, you have to re-oil, re-grease or repaint your parts immediately after using these methods or otherwise they'll catch new rust within hours. Second lesson, if you use sandblasting, then block the media from entering any holes, especially threads in your workpiece. So this is the point where we actually had arrived after my last upload on this topic. Now it was time to restore the old headstock. So the headstock had to be disassembled into its individual parts. The central hollow spindle carrying the three jaw chuck at its front end had to be pulled out of the central cast iron part. And in order to do that, two screws sitting on the rear end of the spindle had to be unscrewed and the heavy cast iron pulley in the middle of it had to be loosened. While rotating in a simple bushing at the front side, I found an actual ball bearing here in the back side. 
But again, a lot of these parts had either rust, old paint, grease or other dirt on them. So a lot of cleaning, de-rusting, etc. had to be done again. The central cast iron part was sandblasted and so was the chuck. Also, the smaller parts were submerged in gasoline to degrease and then they were carefully de-rusted by different means, only to be re-oiled. Now we're in 2017 where all of these parts are being put back together, now already sitting on the machine bed. So the next important component of course was this old cross slide, but in this case I deemed it unnecessary to take it apart because what looked like a lot of rust at first was actually just a little bit of rust and a lot of dirt and grime and grease. So I again just cleaned that very well, removed what little paint was left and applied new oil and there you go. But it was still necessary to connect the motor via two belts to the headstock. And I think that back when this machine was built it did not have a motor of its own because that might have been in the 1920s or 30s I guess. And at that time, at least in some places, uh, central transmissions were still used where large bells were hanging from the ceiling and they were then connected via well a set of pulleys that could be used to adjust the speed to some kind of larger belt connecting to that transmission. So some guy a couple of decades back retrofitted this with an electric motor. So that's why the contraption that is used in order to connect the motor well is a little strange and maybe a little dangerous. So in the future I will probably just connect a three-phase induction motor directly to the headstock and then control that with a variable frequency drive. But for now the goal was to restore it to the condition that I bought it in. So I again removed the paint and the rust from the old parts that comprised this assembly here, which in German is called Vorgelege. I have no idea if there's even an English word for this part that just connects the motor to a large pulley which then goes to that set of pulleys used to adjust the speed. If there's a name for that then let me know it. So I put it all back together except for one part that is. It's a bar that transfers some of the weight of the motor onto the fork shaped part that then puts tension on the belt between the two pulleys with the variable diameters. But I tried to put a lot of pressure onto it manually and then fixated that with a bolt. So I think it's good enough to have a couple of tests. So here you can see me trying a couple of different things, doing a little bit uh, machining first and now drilling a hole with a tailstock chuck here. And that seems to work alright at least. But it seems that, well, at least one of the pulleys is a little off center, a little in balance and that um, gives the entire frame of the machine a little bit of a vibration that I actually want to get rid of. But well, that's just fine tuning. Maybe I should first focus on eliminating some of the dangers of that uh, belt setup. But be that as it may, you will see this machine again, either in upgrade videos or in other build projects where we'll simply use the lathe for something else. So I'm really happy that I bought this thing back then and that I did the restoration. But to be honest, I'm also glad it's over because it was a lot of very dirty, grueling work. And the next project will be more on the electronic side of things again. I'm building a DIY welder and I'm doing that with microwave oven transformers. Yes, another project that we've been talking about a long time ago, but that as well is now finally happening and you'll see me then in the next episode. See you soon.